Welcome to Wolfpack Academy. The radio man is the member of the crew who handles radio traffic, decodes ciphered messages, and operates the hydrophones. He is the ears of the U-boat. The CO depends on the radio man to keep him informed of communications from BDU and other boats. When the U-boat is running submerged below periscope depth, only the radio man can form a picture of the situation around the sub. The Wolfpack radio man works in two stations. The radio shack, where all the Enigma coding machine receiving and transmitting equipment is located, and the hydrophone station where he can listen, locate other ships, and apprise the captain on the situation around them. In playing Wolfpack, you have two options for operating the radio, simplified radio on or off. With simplified radio on, you can send Morse code by simply typing the letters on your keyboard. With simplified radio off, you will need to manually key the dashes and dots with the telegraph key. When playing with the non-player crew members on, you are able to encode messages, but the non-player radio man sends them automatically. When you send messages, you are transmitting a signal that can give away your position. While this function is not currently activated in Wolfpack, it is coming. So you will want to learn some basic radio jargon to allow you to send brief, compact messages. There are many groups playing Wolfpack and most share an agreed upon list of abbreviations and terms. These are the most common and useful. The standard format is to address who the message is for first, either a U-boat number or AS for all stations. This is followed by DE, which means from, and then your subs number. You can use the tab key if you want to remind yourself which sub you are on. Then enter the message, use X for a sentence break, and XX to finish. If you are asking a question, use IMI as a question mark. When you receive a message, wait for the appropriate time to inform the captain. Don't blurt it out in the middle of another crewman's report. Only in the case of an emergency should you interrupt any evasive maneuver or fire control discussions. The other equipment in the radio room includes the direction finder gear and antenna. This is not currently functional in Wolfpack and is for show only at this time. Sending and receiving Enigma encoded messages. In the radio room, you have two sections you can click into. The Enigma machine with its notebook and the Morse code radio transceiver. The Enigma machine station consists of the Enigma rotors and keyboard and the encryption notebook. The notebook has several tabs, encode tab, decode tab, sent messages and received messages. Click again on the notebook to access the second layer to save, write notes, write meaning and turn page. Save means you will clear the fields and start with a new page. Notes is simply stuff you want to make note of to remember what you're doing at the time, like radio message was cut off, for example. The meaning column is where you can copy the decrypted message and enter spaces, decimal points, numerals, etc. for clarity. Left click into the Morse code radio transceiver station. Here is the telegraph key and incoming message pad. This is where you can manually operate the telegraph key to enter Morse messages with simplified radio off, or with simplified radio on you simply type the letters or use shortcut messages. To the right is the pad to take down incoming messages. To send an encoded message, first you need to prepare and encode the message. This is the procedure for preparing an encoded message. Set the rotors to a random order, for example, DHKP. Then type DHKP. This will appear in the wheel settings section of the notebook. Then type any four random letters to create the white message key. For example, ZRWS. 
and you'll see that has given you a red message key of JVUL. This will be used later when sending the message. Change the rotor settings to the white message key, ZRWS. ZRWS is now set in the Enigma machine. Now you can begin typing out your message in plain text. To abort the message, you can backspace out. When your message contains numbers, you can either spell out the word 3 or 7, etc., for example. Or you can use the letter key with the desired numeral, such as Q for 1, R for 4, P for 0, etc. For example, the numerals 357, you would press the letters ETU. Message styles and abbreviations vary between different players and groups. Many use an X to separate sentences, an XX or K to end the message. When you have finished creating the coded message, the plain text you typed in has been encoded to the left column as ciphertext. This, along with the wheel settings and the red message key, is what we will send out in Morse on the telegraph. Click on the upper left portion of the page where it says Radio Message and Save. This tears off the sheet and moves it to the telegraph notepad to the left Right-click to leave the Enigma notebook, and then click into the radio transceiver to send the encoded message. Before sending the message, alert the other U-boats that you're about to transmit. This gives them time to man the radio and get ready. When they reply, ready, you can begin. If you have the simplified radio option off, you will key in the Morse dots and dashes manually. Likewise, any messages you receive will be dots and dashes for you to turn into text. If you have simplified radio option on, simply type the letters in the ciphertext column. First, send the wheel key and red message key settings. In this case, it is DHKP and JVUL. Then send the ciphertext. When the message is complete, End it with XX or click on the key and select end of message. Then click in the message sent box to mark the message as sent. When receiving an encrypted message, acknowledge you are ready. Then click into the radio messages pad and write down the message as it comes in.
If you get a string of E's, note that the previous word group may be getting a correction. Yes, you see? That has a letter change, which means it is a corrected group. Send verification you have received the message. Once the message is complete, right-click twice to leave and go to the Enigma machine. Click the Decode tab. Enter the first four letters as the rotor wheel settings and then set the rotors. Then type the next four letters as the left message key. This generates the right message key. Set the rotors to the right message key. Then enter the remaining cipher text. This should produce the decrypted message. Notice I am skipping the four-letter group, preceding the EEE -E -E correction. That's it. That's the message. You may elect to write the plain text message in the right meaning column for easier reference. When you see a group of letters that do not seem to make a word, Check and see if they are numbers for things like grid numbers, U-boat numbers, times, speed, course, etc. Then save the decrypted message and report to the captain. In the hydrophone or listening station is the hydrophone. Some navigation and propulsion instruments. And a phonograph. Click into the station and use the mouse or A and D keys to turn the sweep needle. The U-boat's hydrophone is a listening device that only works when submerged. It can be directed in any direction around the boat the closer a contact is to the sub, the louder the sound will be. There are two bearing rings around the sweep needle. The black outer ring is the relative bearing. This ring does not move, and the zero is always pointing to the front of the boat. Likewise, the 90 indicates a sound from the right side of the sub, 270 means you are listening from the left, and 180 means the sound is directly behind the boat. The area directly behind the sub is referred to as the baffles. Keep in mind, if your own U-boat's propellers are turning, they will create some sound and could mask the sound of an enemy in that direction. You may ask the captain to stop propulsion momentarily or make a slight course change to check your baffles. The white inner ring is the 
true bearing ring. The number on the inner ring corresponds to the map's true north number. This dial turns with the direction of the sub. If you mentally align the N on the white ring with north on your map, you can see where 90, 270, and 180 are in relation to your heading of 281. For example, in this case, the sub is on a heading of 030. Captain requests a contact bear. You find it and narrow in on the strongest part of the signal. Relative bearing 018. The captain can mark his own course, 030, and set the protractor 0 to his course. Then plot a bearing line along relative 018. Let's go with medium range. Now in this training mode, you can check your work. The contact lies on the sub's 018 relative bearing, which would be on a true bearing of 048. The hydrophone operator would tell the captain he has a contact at 018 relative. The captain would set a course for 048 to intercept. If the fire control party is unable to make visual contact with the enemy, the captain may order a submerged hydrophone sweep. Once submerged, the radio man will do a 360 degree sweep and establish contact, inform the captain the relative and true bearing. The captain will then know where the enemy is in relation to his U-boat and the course he needs to establish for an intercept. In addition to the power on-off switch, there are four knobs to control the gain, high pass filter, directionality, and rectifier. Currently in game, the only relevant knobs are gain and directionality. Gain control can be used to estimate range by finding the distortion point on a sound and relating the gain setting to range. For example, if a contact sound begins distorting at two and a half gain, and another is distorting at three and a half gain, you can roughly guess which of the two is the closest. And by tracking a contact, you can adjust the gain as it moves for a very rough estimate of whether it is closing or moving away. Directionality narrows the field of focus. When you want an overview of the situation, you use the broad range. When trying to pinpoint the direction of a single ship, you use the narrow range. The rectifier causes some distortion but also effectively doubles the frequency of whatever you are listening to, making it easier to pick out low frequency sounds. Right now it just exists for role playing slash completeness. The high pass filter removes lower frequencies. In real life, but currently not in game, higher frequencies fall off faster as you rotate around. So by filtering out lower frequencies you could get a more precise direction. Radio man! Die Fasse boom! Here back. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, I've depth? been here the whole time. In what depth? Okay, you said repeat the relative on the ping. Uh, 145 to 155. There looks to be three escorts closing in on us. <laughs> Passing 50 meters. Passing 50. Captain, At recommend a hard port turn. Okay. Turn hard port. Hard port. When the sub is trying to evade attack and cannot visually see the enemy, the commanding officer will rely on the radio man for calm, accurate, regularly timed bearing and range reports on sonar contacts to make his tactical maneuvering decisions. Unless otherwise ordered, give the captain relative bearings. This concludes the Radio Man training film. Use the link below to take the qualification exam and earn your Radio Man qualification certificate. Then you can start on the Senior Radio Man course to learn more advanced techniques. Thank you for playing Wolfpack, good hunting, and don't forget to close the hatch.